everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you day 12 of the hashtag AJ Snark Attack 2020 event, which is a month long daily art journaling challenge for the month of October 2020. And I am using a Dilusions Dialogue journal to do this. It has, it's a sewn journal from Ranger, which has um, Manila cardstock as the the pages and I'm just working my th way through as I do the snarky quotes on the pages uh, that we're doing all month. This is from Art Joy of Sharing Art Community over on Facebook. There will be a link below the video in the show more section down there that you can click to join the group and participate and share your art. However, when you ask to join, please don't skip the questions. You will not be accepted if you skip the questions. So to start out my journal page today, I decided to make a two page spread. I have been doing just one skinny page each day. Yesterday, I did not do a page on day, day 11 because I had a great day with my son. It was his birthday. The family was here and we um, ate barbecue chicken and potato salad and we uh, ate a lot of pie because he likes pie for his birthday. I made four different pies and then um, we played board games. We played guitar and sang, uh, spent the whole day together. So I just didn't have time yesterday to make a page and that's perfectly fine. If you don't get every day done, it's not the end of the world. You know, you don't have to uh, hang your head in shame if you... If you miss a day during the challenge, that's just the way life is. For me, I'm doing a page every day and also a video and editing every day, which is a lot. So I'm not going to do day 11 and I'm not going to feel bad about it because <laughs> that's the family was more important. So I picked pa uh, papers that either had a light color or had a translucent property to make my background. I wanted it to be a mellow background with mostly yellows, uh, neutral tones, desert tones, because I plan to do a painting over the top of this and I don't want the background to be crazy. But I do want it to be pretty and I want it to have interest and pattern. I found this uh, piece of craft colored deli paper that had some Titan buff paint on it with uh, some shapes. And I knew that if when I put that down over some of the other pieces that were brighter, that it would calm them down and add shape. I also found a piece of tissue paper that had some pretty pinks and oranges. Um, a lot of these pieces have a color called Naples Yellow, which is to me a neutral. It's a yellow, but it's a neutral color to me. And I, I really like that color. And so a lot of them have some of that on there. And then there's also some pinks and oranges and tans and, uh, I don't know, deserty colors to me, like the Sahara Desert type colors. There's also pattern and um, interest. And I'm just tearing the pages, the papers that I have uh, using a ruler. And some of them are already in a shape and then... Um, Gluing them down with Liquitex matte gel medium, trying to make sure everything is really down good. Uh, it's it, this paper in this journal is a Mandela cardstock, so already to start off with, you're not going to have perfectly flat pages. It's just the nature of it. If you're going to do mixed media with collage and things, and you're going to have some layers on there, the pages aren't going to be flat. They might flatten out, you know, once the pa the book is done and it's closed and it's you know put somewhere under something it'll probably flatten out eventually but not going to be perfectly smooth and flat and that's just the nature of art journals so here's my Naples yellow color and I'm using it with my finger I did put some art guard uh, barrier cream on my hands before I uh, started this process so that I would not get any chemicals in my skin so that's something to think about if you're going to finger paint but I do love to use my fingers to paint and what I was doing was uh, integrating all these little spaces I wanted to take away any hard lines to make my background completely um, seemingly one piece 
Then I have this Jumbo Jet pencil. This is a charcoal pencil that is oil impregnated. <laughs> that makes me laugh. And it's it's a big fat pencil. Uh, it would be good for kids. It's you know easy to hold. This one is called Sanguine, which um, I believe means blood. I think that that's maybe a French word or something for blood. But anyway, it's kind of a reddish uh, burnt sienna color. And I was planning on drawing a desert scene. This is a camel. And the camel is uh, carrying things like camels do. Uh, I saw this illustration somewhere. I don't know. I saw something like this somewhere. And I wanted to draw a camel. I like to... Uh, make animals. I think that animals are great characters and they often have funny uh, expressions and they do things that of course we as humans interpret as human behavior although of course they're not being humans they're just being silly animals but you know we we attribute these these expressions and things to uh, give them emotion and try to think about them in a human sort of way. And I think that that's fun for, to do animals for this challenge because of the snarky quotes. I just, I think the animals, the silly character animals and the snarky quotes go together really well. So I've been making a lot of animals in my journal this time. I also just happen to like to draw and illustrate animals and I, I've noticed that I'm sort of tending towards illustration for this challenge. Um, I thought what I was going to do was just make it simple and make like kind of abstract pretty pages and then put the quotes on. But I find myself really illustrating the quote using some sort of a drawing or, you know, a stamped image or cutout image or something. So I, I guess that's where I'm going. <laughs> and so far there, well, there has been some human figures, but there's been a lot of animals in this book so far. We're on day 12, so not even halfway through yet. So maybe I'll do some more human human faces and, um, you know, they're expressive too. So I don't know. I just, I like animals. So I'm using DecoArt Media Fluid Paint, acrylic paint today to paint my drawing, to color my drawing. I'm using paint. Then I'm also going to use acrylic markers to do the, the illustrating part at the end and add in details because I find markers are easy to control. I could do it with markers completely or I could do it with paint and a brush completely but I just mostly wanted to paint my camel, paint the base colors of everything with these uh, media paints which I really like. They're highly pigmented, they're inexpensive, you know a lot, they're, they're very comparable to like a golden fluid acrylic. I would say that they're almost the same and they're so much less expensive. So I really do like these paints. And of course, they, they are the artist colors. Like I, I used raw sienna, burnt sienna, and Titan buff on the camel to do my shading and highlights. Um, I'm using primary magenta. I'm using cobalt till hue. You know, they're, they're the standard artist colors, artist pigments. And... Um, just done in a less expensive way, I guess. I'm not really sure why DecoArt can make them a better price than Golden can. I don't really know the difference, but I don't. I mean, I do have some Golden Fluid and it's wonderful. It's wonderful paint, but it is expensive. So if you want to try something like an artist quality, I really recommend these DecoArt Media Fluid paints. They come in one ounce bottles and just a little teeny tiny drop goes a long way because they've got a lot of pigment in them. So I'm just continuing to paint. Uh, I started out with a, a small flat brush and then now I've switched to a small round brush, very small brush, so that I have a lot of control. And I'm mixing the colors um, a little bit maybe adding some Titan Buff if I want to lighten up the color a little bit to make it a different hue than it was out of the bottle. But mostly I'm just painting, you know, out of the bottle. I've put some little dots of it on a paper plate to use as a palette. So there's really not much else to say about that. The, the camel's carrying a lot of baskets and jars and boxes uh, because camels 
in the desert with the nomadic people are often used as kind of like pack mules, like we would use in the United States, we would use mules. Um, a friend of mine is, is taking that trip at the Grand Canyon where you go with the mules down to the Grand Canyon to the bottom and camp overnight. I think that sounds really super cool. However, I think that I would freak out. I would be like way too nervous and worried that the, the mule was going to trip <laughs> or fall off the canyon wall. You know, I just, I just don't think I have the gumption to do it. This same, this same person, she's really more of an acquaintance than a friend. She's someone from, from my husband's work. She went, she's been twice now to Tibet and uh, went with the Sherpas up the mountain to the top twice. That's, that's like amazing, right? <laughs> Another thing I don't think I could do. It's for one thing, I don't think I'm physically capable of doing that at this point even though she's older than me. And for another thing, I think I would just be too nervous and worried about everything and the air's getting thin and, you know, the, it's cold and yeah. Anyway, amazing person. So that might be what I was thinking about when I was doing this camel was the, the pack meals in the, the Grand Canyon. I'm not sure, but anyway, this camel is a girl. And so I'm using girly colors like the pinks and the oranges and the yellows. And um, I'm going to make her have a funny expression. You know, she's, she's funny, not just a standard meal, um, camel, but a funny camel. So now I've got uh, all my Posca pins. Um, I actually have three different sets of Posca pins out. However, I've noticed that you can buy all the Posca pins now in one big set. Like I've had to buy them to get the different colors. I've had to buy different sets. And one of them is called Naturals. The other one is just the standard eight set of the fine tip that has the, the yellow, orange, blue, pink, red, black and white fine tips. And then the third one I have out is the skin tones and it has a brown and a couple different off-white shades and kind of a an orangey pink shade just four in that one but these days you can just buy them all in one big set which I would have had I been able to do that when I when I first started using Posca pins they just had that set of bright colors and that and then black and white and that was um, all they had. I started out with black and white and then when I found that I really loved these pens uh, for my mixed media work I bought the 12 set of medium tips that had all the colors and then as time has passed they've added more sets with more colors so that's how I got mine. So for illustration I decided to use I first was just not going to use any black and white. So I've been using this off-white pen uh, that came from the skin tone set. And then I ended up putting in some black uh, with my fine tip black. And I decided that what I would do was go ahead and make it a regular illustration by putting a lot of lines around it. But I would just make them really dotty and scratchy and... Um, not like full solid press down lines. I made everything, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Dotty. Like I'm just, I'm moving my hand up and down. And I know this is going fast, but I need to keep my video under 12, 20 minutes. <laughs> and so this, this process was much longer than I could condense into 20 minutes easily today because I didn't do anything yesterday. I just wanted to sit in my studio and play and this is what came out of it. So <laughs> I think it's cute. I think she's cute. She's got lipstick on. She's got blush on. She's got a little bit of blue eyeshadow on her eye. Teal blue. Um, 
and of course a lot of decoration on all the different straps and things and the jars and boxes and bo and everything have a lot of decoration on them because that's just how I imagine it. <laughs> I know the nomadic people like pattern and color probably because they get tired of you know having the plain tan and desert with nothing for so so long that the tents and um, everything that they use they try to add color and pattern to it so she's got some prayer flags around her neck she's got some pom-poms and tassels and all the fun stuff pretty baskets pretty jars lots of pattern and color and I had a lot of fun doing this it's just it's just pure mark making good exercise for your hand I didn't use any white it looks like I did but I used that off-white pen for all the white that there was so she's even got a couple desert plants that uh, she's carrying there was a there was a, a an imbalance to me um, right there where I'm putting that flower I felt like uh, there was it, something needed to be there and I could have drawn another box or jar but I decided to just make a flower maybe it's a paper flower I don't know she's feeling sassy she's she's looking cute so <laughs> why not <laughs> why not make a flower so I used a couple different pinks and that tealish green color to make a couple flowers one in her on her head too just to be fun so then I was looking for the quote I wanted to use it's it ended up being out of the way world I've got my sassy pants on today <laughs> I thought that was perfect to go with my illustration so I'm going to stamp that using a discontinued stamp set from Stampin Up um, this one's called brush stroke alphabet and I'll put a link to eBay if you want to purchase this stamp set, you can probably find it there. Pretty much all the discontinued stuff seems to be on eBay. This stamp set's old, and um, some of the stamps are hardening up. So what I am doing is using a little bit of a sanding block and sanding off the top hard layer of the stamps, and then they will stamp again. So that's just a little tip. These are the, the red latex rubber, so you can rough it up and it stamps better if you do that so I'm just using like a little uh, nail emery board block thing that I have that I use for sanding and I'm using archival black ink to stamp I hope you're enjoying this video and this snarky series that we're having all the month of October I hope you will join us and share your art if you are liking it please remember to give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment subscribe if you haven't already and of course there's videos every day except for yesterday this month <laughs> hopefully I'll make it all the way through the month with videos every day for the rest of the time so keep watching keep leaving me comments I like to read you know everyone's comments I like to hear what people think about the pages that I'm making all this art journaling all month so once I finished up um, my stamping, then I just touched it up a little bit in places. I had a pen from that Naturals set from Posca that's pretty much the color of Naples Yellow. So I could touch up a few little spots where I didn't stamp well. And yeah, that was it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.